What is going on, folks? It's NimbleThaw here, and Nexon. You know Nexon, right? The developers of everything from Durango Wildlands to the MapleStory games. They're just pumping out games these days, and one of the newest ones is this Gacha RPG Returners, which we're going to have a look at today in my mobile gaming quest. And I've got a bit of an interesting fact that actually really surprised me about this game waiting near the end of this video, so be sure to stick around for that. The most unique thing about Returners, though, is that it's an RPG but focused on strategy rather than action. And what I mean by that is that maybe you guys noticed before we started this match, we could choose a strategy for which hero should attack which opponent, as well as which skill cards we take with us and the formation of the team. We'll go over that uh, once this match is over here, which it is now, it seems. Nice, we won already. The matches are really quick in the game, by the way, and I'm glad to see that as well, because I like that when these are automatic, because they are automatic, we don't, we literally do nothing once the battle has started. It's nice that they don't take forever to complete. This is the formation that I mean, we can choose between different battle formations here. As you guys can see, we're switching around between them now. And we can also choose which hero should attack which other hero. So we can go here to change target, and we can actually click on, for example, this one over here instead. So now everyone attacks that one, and we can also do an individual uh, individual hero and target a specific opponent with that hero. So let's try this setup here, and let's go into one more battle. The battles then unfold, as I said before, automatically, much like in Crash Arena Turbo Stars. Uh, although the two games are vastly different in style, uh, the, the gameplay, this gameplay element, is very, very similar. And at a time where it's increasingly difficult, at least I think, to figure out which gacha RPG to play, at least Returners is trying something different with the focus here on, uh, on strategy. And a few other things that actually sets this game apart from most others, and we can go have a look at that right now actually, is that any hero can equip any item. And any hero can also go from one star all the way up to six stars instead of being locked in which is really, really neat. So if we go in to have a look at the teams here, we can see that each of these heroes, for example, this one here, is not maximum level right now. So we can level it up by spending some of these experience books here. And once we've done that, we can actually transcend the hero. Now, this is one of the things I actually don't like about the game, is that we have to wait for the transcend... In transcension... Trend what? Transcending? Transcension? <laughs> to take place. We have to wait for this one to finish... Transcending, I guess that's how you'd say it. And it takes 15 hours to do, uh, which is a long time to wait, honestly. And it does change the level of the hero all the way back to level 1. But at least it will now have become a level 3 or a 3-star hero, which does increase the maximum uh, capacities of the hero. So it has the opportunity to become stronger. Now, as you guys can see here, with the armor, we can pick any any sort of armor to equip on this hero here. And we can also use the auto equip and either choose, hey, do we want mainly physical defense type armor on this one or magical defense type armor? I think on this one, because it's gonna attack the closest enemy, most of the time that means it'll be in physical combat. So fighting against other physical uh, units. So we're gonna go for physical auto equipment here. We also have achievements for each and every of these heroes, which is a nice way to get some premium currency. We have runes over here, which are gonna be uh, more useful later on. And then we also have a short story about each of these heroes. So a lot of depth, a lot of depth to this game. So now with that, let's go into one more level here. And I'm gonna go into the league system because the league system is rather unique as well. A lot about this game is actually rather unique because the league setup uh, works this way. So we face off in 39 battles throughout the week where we fight each other player in the league three times until you know an ultimate victor emerges at the end. And the game takes place automatically just as this combat right here, but we can change the strategy up till 15 minutes before the start of each match. And it's kind of an interesting way to do PvP, honestly. It's more about strategy than, you know, reaction time and, and the action part of it, which might not be for everyone, but it is certainly very, very unique. And I gotta admit, it's kind of nice to open up the game, go in there and see which league matches you won, how you did in the league, change your strategy for the next league, stuff like that. It is kind of interesting and it's a bit more relaxed uh, than these games where we have to fight every single match manually. But I will say I don't typically like auto systems, but in this game, with this huge focus on strategy and the strategic elements of the game, it does actually make sense that these battles might as well just be automatically. Actually, with if we had manual fighting in this game, we wouldn't be able to have the same strategic elements in here because you could basically ruin your own strategy by playing in the wrong way. 
What I don't particularly like about the game, however, is, as I said before, once we reach max level with the hero and they have to transcend, it takes time to wait for that. But it is a pretty standard RPG system to have, you know, heroes being able to transcend. Uh, just dislike the party that we have to wait uh, for such a long time. But it's not a huge deal and it's honestly, together with the energy system, two of the only things that I've really found that are worthwhile mentioning as sort of negative elements of the game that are just, I, I think objectively just negative, right? It, 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 it ruins the game to have an energy system in there. It ruins the game to, uh, to have wait times. I really don't like that. So, it looks like we finished another quest, but I just wanna try to go on here, see how many of these levels here uh, we can get through before eventually hitting a wall where we have to go in and maybe upgrade our heroes, because I think that would be interesting. So far, we're doing fairly well, even without using any of the cards down here. We do have cards that we can use manually in battle. As you can see, we also have recovery here, so let's recover this hero over here. I think she lost a bit of HP. We should've probably recovered the, the main tank guy, though. It looks like he's about to lose now or die now, but I think we'll definitely win this match uh, regardless though. And overall, I still think that playing Returners is, is something you're gonna enjoy, and if you're looking for a mix of a strategy and RPG game that you can really just stick hundreds of hours into and really become good at, because you can really become good at setting up the strategy here, then this might just be the game for you, because I've I've rarely seen any guy to RPG with a more in-depth system than this game. And lastly, I just want to mention that there are so many other systems that I have not gone into yet because this video would have become way too long if we, if we did go into that. So go check out the game. It's out on Android and iOS. The download links are in the description box if you do want to check it out for yourself. So lastly, I promised you guys an interesting fact I would mention here at the end of the video, and that is that the game monetizes through selling us rare items. I mean, obviously, the game has to monetize somehow, but surprisingly, the heroes themselves can actually all be acquired for gold. So can we even call this a gacha game anymore? Because a big part of a gacha game is that we unlock heroes randomly. Well, I, th I still think we can call it a gacha game because we unlock these items randomly instead. But all heroes can actually be acquired for gold, in-game gold, uh, that you can't buy as long as we've completed enough of the campaign levels. And that is really neat to see. That's a nice change of pace from the typical uh, gacha RPG systems. This does not mean that the game isn't slightly pay to win though, because these items do make a big difference in the game and they can be acquired for real life money, but it is a nice change of pace that we can at least get all the heroes uh, rather easily, I'll take rather easily for absolutely free. Now, this does not mean that the developers cannot choose to make the game pay to win later on because they can just choose to make the items we get for free pretty bad in comparison to what we would get if we spent real life money on the game. But it's just, as I said before, a really nice change of pace and I think that reason in and of itself is, is enough, at least if you like gacha RPGs, to at least give this one uh, a go, just because it's so unique. But what do you guys think about the game? Do let me know down in the comment section down below. And before we end off here, I just wanna go back to the home screen. And I wanna just quickly, very quickly, go into the shop just so you guys can see the in-app purchases in here. So this is where I said we can get these rare gear by spending real life money, but we do get a very nice chunk of this premium currency here for free every single day. So we can actually do a free draw here. As you guys can see, we can choose, for example, rare armor and we get a new rare armor piece. We do need enough armor pieces for five heroes though. So we need a lot of armor pieces, but it's still nice that we can do that. And since we get so much of the premium currency for free, it's nice that we can also actually go in and buy, for example, a new rare weapon if we wanted to. So guys, what do you think about it? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've tried it already. Let me know if you wanna try it. Let me know if you don't like these types of games. And if you have nothing else to comment, please let me know what one of your favorite mobile games these days is because I always like getting new recommendations. So with that said, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. Leave a like if you liked the video. And until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.